Hi folks, welcome to IMB Magazine. My name is Clive Forth from MTB Skills and you're joining us for the Skills and Technique feature. Each issue we're going to be looking at different techniques and the core skills uh, to riding mountain bikes. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Here we're going to be looking at a bit of a mini series of what I consider the core skills and it all starts with the wheelie. The wheelie links you sweetly into learning manuals and bunny hops. All these skills are about pivoting over the rear axle. In order to perform good, consistent manuals, you've got to get that front wheel right up in the air and be comfortable in that neutral balance point. And the height of that limits the height in which you bunny hop. So here we go. As you can see, bunny hops come in on the trail in all sorts of places. Whether we're using a little donk to cheat that lift or whether we're just pulling hops off the flat for practice, it really is a skill that's worth sessioning. Super, so freestyling out hops, I've got no idea how high that is. I certainly know that I buzz the boys off of the back tyre and that's always a good sign that I've got a bit of lift. So it starts with a manual. I'm loaded up from that manual and I can spring up off of essentially what is kind of like dipped heels, pulling the bike through or kicking the bike through with the feet. From that point I can spring upwards, punch the bar up and forwards and then lift the legs up into the torso to get that back wheel up to height. Going on with the bar, it's quite simple. You can hop the bike without being on it by making this shape. If I'm on top of the bike, all I've got to do is lift my weight out of it to get it to come in the air. And that's from driving the bar forwards, I'm lifting the legs up into the body to do so. So that's kind of my regular bunny hop. It's a manual hop. Now, what you learned previously in the previous issue with the manuals is there's two styles. So this would be like a very trail style bunny hop and it's driven from a very trail style manual. So it's very short, very snappy, it has to be. I've got little room to manoeuvre to get up onto a feature or over something in the trail. Um, whereas if you did a, more of a street style, it gets a bit more like playtime stuff. You can hold that manual for longer before you do the hop. So to initiate that lift, you're just gonna start the same manual as, as you learned in the previous issue, where it's much lower and slower. It almost feels a bit lazy you throw the bike out in front of you, you end up really hanging out the back of the bike more. Manual, 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 manual. It's all still loaded up. You can see the back end of the bike, the suspension squashed up, and even on a hard tail, that's kind of stored energy in there. Compression of the tire and the spokes and the frame and your limbs. And that's what you're springing up out of to pop that back wheel in there. Now then, this for some people just seems like a complete mystery to how it's done. You can break it down into some really nice bite-sized chunks. And what we're going to do now is we're going to do a little front wheel lift, a little rear wheel lift. And to get that rear wheel lift, I'm simply dropping down and popping back up. So I kind of dip my heel on the way down, spring up from that and bounce up off the pedals. To get extra lift again, I keep the legs coming up into the body. And I've got to be key that I make sure that I'm lifting my legs up into the body at the same speed that the bike's coming up towards me. If I do that too quick, not so much in the clip, but if I was on a flat pedal, I'd come off the pedal. In a clip, I'm gonna come unclipped, potentially. Or I'm gonna end up tugging on the pedal and that's gonna try and pull the cleat out the bottom of the shoe and that's not pretty. We're not using the cleat to lift. And in fact, I'll actually do these unclipped just so you think that, you know, oh, he's cheating, he's lifting up on his pedal. So I'll do these unclipped for you. So it's compressing down and springing up is the way I'm gonna do it. But I must lift the legs up into the body to get more height. So have a watch, we're gonna do front wheel lift, rear wheel lift, and then you'll see in the sequence after this, but I start to stitch it together much quicker and it's like a little rabbit hopping and that's how we get into the bunny hop but the height of your hop is always going to be limited by the height of your man All right, so you, as you've had a good chance to see there, we've played some of that back for you in slow-mo. You can see this little front wheel lift, rear wheel lift, and then a rear wheel lift on its own. And I blatantly show you in the clip there that I'm not clipped into my pedal, I'm not lifting up off my pedal. And then in the last sort of sequence, you see 
those things come together where in quick succession I lift the front wheel, I lift the back wheel and the quicker I can stitch that together I can perform a little bunny hop. So what happens then when you want to do bigger bunny hops? Well you've got to get a bigger manual. Go back an issue, check that out, learn to do a bigger manual. When you're getting some really good height underneath that front wheel and a little bit of sustain to the lift you can then put in the same shape that you're making in that real small micro bunny hop into your bigger hop. The bigger you want your hop to be, the bigger you've got to get your manual, and the more dynamic you've got to work that bar, lifting up and out, punching the bike forwards, and getting that muscle memory in that legs to recoil and come up into the body just at the right time to make the timing. If you can learn them out in a nice, safe environment, here we're playing on one of the forest roads, it may be, it's really cool. You get the consistency, you can bring a stick in for a bit of timing, you can hop over a puddle, and then you can kind of take that to the trail, and that's what you're going to see in some of these up and coming clips. Okay, so there's a lot of advantages to learning really good technique on the bike. And when that comes to the bunny hop, the advantages are you use a lot less energy to get the bike over features, and it's a safe technique. If you're in that kind of knuckle biting world of currently doing the two wheel lift together, you're bouncing the bike to get the, the lift, and all of these shapes are very square this way, and we're actually trying to go forwards that way. We're also expelling a lot of energy to get over the feature in question. There's a potential to create a stall point and you end up with this like heavy bike dangled off of hyper extended limbs. And if you're on rough terrain, there's a possibility that you actually just push yourself into a hole and you exaggerate a bit of a stall and that can hang you up and really mess up with the timing, mess up with your speed and pitch you off the bike. So if I wanted to clear something on the trail, we're just using the stick as our example, but it could be a log, it could be a chunk of rock. Um, then what we'd have to do is press the bike down, lift it up in the air, travel all this distance with it in the air and come and land down over here. Limbs are stiff, they're extended, I can't manoeuvre the bike left right in that scenario. If we bring in the technique you're learning by reading and looking at this video, in this issue with a manual hop it's just a simple case of popping that manual and when that back wheel is about to contact with the feature bringing up and lifting the rear wheel over. It's much more controlled. Now likewise, if I need to move the bike, I can start a bit of turn as I manual, hop and kick the back end over, and I can hop out of awkward situations. We know this as kids riding natural terrain and you get a rutted up piece of trail and you're on the good ground over here and you've got to get to the good ground over there because you're running out of space and you've got to hop sideways across it. Oh man, I love this piece of trail first off, and I think you can tell in the exuberance of the riding style. But it's not all for style, there is actually a benefit to what I'm doing here. On the first route that we've come over, using a bunny up to pre-jump over that takes out the punch and the kick that I'd get from the route, which would mean that I'd just be flying through the air and getting a flat landing, which loses all my speed into the trail, and I'm not progressing forwards. So by pre-jumping it using a bunny up, I can catch a downslope and carry momentum towards this next feature, which is this fantastic gap between these trees with these chunky roots on. Again, I'm trying to let the trail do the work for me here. I'm actually quite lazy, so if I can get a bonk off of these, that initiates that lift, and I'm just following it up with the bunny hop shape. But in this scenario, because we've got all these roots through here, if I put that hip shape in, kick the back end out, which is what you're getting in that uh, sort of lateral bunny hop when you're putting the turn shapes in, I can get up on the bank in a little bit, push down off of that and drive the bike on through the next section of trail. So it's all about thinking about, you know, is it going to hang me up? Is it going to stall me? Can I eliminate that by pre-jumping it with a bunny hop? Or can I use that to my advantage and bonk off of it and get some lift, some free lift to move the bike further along to clear other snagglers and things that are going to slow the bike up on the way through. So there we have it folks, thanks once again for tuning in and listening to my verbal diarrhoea. Um, it's always good to share these things with, with riders and I really hope that you do get out there and put some time in and practice this and some of the skills that are coming up in the future issues. I sure have had so much out of my trail riding experiences and it's all thanks to practice and playtime.